All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about separating equilibrium. If I can finish it in say five or seven minutes, I'm gonna continue in pulling equilibrium at, uh, towards the end. Uh, but if I can't, if it takes longer than this, I'm gonna make another video for pulling equilibrium. So, um, uh, I also forgot again, uh, if you remember in the previous video, I couldn't remember the, uh, the, the, the notion uh, for the assumption where the high types cost of education are lower than the low types cost of education. We call this single crossing property. Uh, it's something technical, but I just uh, really wanted to remember it. Anyway, so uh, never mind. Um, so in this game, uh, there might be multiple outcome. Um, but we separate, we categorize them as, because these are the two most important outcomes, separating equilibrium versus pooling equilibrium, all right? Um, well, sometimes in some scenarios, there might be a mixture of those. I mean, neither separating nor pooling. We call it hybrid equilibrium. But again, for this intermediate level course, we're gonna ignore such equilibria or outcome, all right? So we either talk about separating equilibrium or pooling equilibrium. What do we mean by separating equilibrium? So separating equilibrium is an equilibrium. I mean, these are in a sense Nash equilibrium of this game, all right? I mean, how is this is an, a game? Well, they're firms and they're the, the worker. So these are the players, firms and the worker, right? And what about the strategies? Well, strategies for the worker are simple. The worker is basically choosing whether to take education or not to take education. That's it. So the, it's a binary decision for a worker. Once again, the decision for the worker is very simple. Get education or don't get education. Right? Zero, one. For the firms, uh, well, the actions are kind of obvious, assuming that they are competitive, which is offer, them, offer the worker wage, which is equal to its productivity. Uh, okay, and so the profit functions are, as I said, I mean the util the payoff functions are those utility functions. So this actually model is a is a game, and so we are in a sense finding an equilibrium. I mean, Bayesian we call it Bayesian Nash equilibrium, but uh, let's not get lost with the terminology. So you can think of this as a Nash equilibrium of this game. It's an equilibrium, all right? So I'm not even gonna call it Nash equilibrium. It's just equilibrium. But again, we have two kinds of equilibria, separating equilibrium or pooling equilibrium. So what do we mean by separating equilibrium? In separating equilibrium, different types always take different actions, all right? So in this very particular example, we have two types. Remember, we have two actions. So one type takes one action, the other uh, type takes the other action. So here, the expected outcome that, I mean, uh, a, uh, a reasonable outcome is that the high type guy, the Sheldon, gets the education and, 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 and Penny, the low productivity guy, does not get the education. So therefore, the firms can separate the workers, all right? So in a separating equilibrium, it means the, the low type worker Penny is not going to get a PhD, but the Sheldon kind of guy will get PhD. So if, as, if I'm a firm and if I have a worker applying for a job uh, interview, well, I'm going to look at his, uh, you know, a, a, a diploma. Do you have a PhD? He does. Okay, well, then this person should be Sheldon-like high productivity guy. If you don't have a PhD in a separating equilibrium, uh, the firm's is, a firm is going to interpret this as, oh, okay, this guy should be penny kind of low productivity worker. All right? Well, what about the pooling equilibrium? In the pooling equilibrium, all types take the same action. Here again, we have two agents, two types, I'm sorry and two actions. Therefore, we may have two possible pooling equilibrium. One in which both high and low productive guys get education. So both Sheldon and Penny get the education. All right, which is kind of good. I mean, although it's very costly for Penny, she would have, I mean, it's, it's a nice outcome that Penny also gets a PhD. Another equilibrium could be that 
uh, they don't get, you know, so nobody gets an education. So this is kind of a horrible situation. Why? Well, because no one gets an education because the education doesn't have any signaling value. It doesn't, well, I mean, in this model, it doesn't increase your productivity either, right? So the education is costly. That's it. The, the education has no other benefit. It doesn't increase their productivity. So therefore, no education by no agents is the worst possible outcome. So let's see what we have. So in order to make sure that we have a separating equilibrium, remember our starting point is that the high type gets education and the low type doesn't. Okay. Well, because this is an equilibrium, we have to verify if any one of those types, the high type or the low type, will regret from this choice. I mean, will high type will actually regret and say, ah, oh, you know what, I, should, I, I wish I shouldn't have a PhD. Uh, so because, you know, I, I, well, it, it's not worth it. Or maybe the low type, the penny is going to say, oh, I wish I should have a PhD because it was so worth it. Uh, so if this is going to be the case, if they're going to regret of their choices, it means this is not an equilibrium. All right. So again, we are just checking uh, a Nash here. So here, what's going to be the utility of the uh, high type? All right. Well, the utility of high type uh, with education E equals one or equals zero. Remember, so education is either one or zero. So E equals one. Well, what is his utility? Well, in a separating equilibrium, remember, whenever the firms observe that you got an education, they will believe that you're a high type worker. And so they're going to pay you $15. So this is the benefit. But because you took education, there's going to be cost of education and you're a high type. The cost is only $1. So net benefit is $14 per hour. All right. Well, however, if you, a high type, but consider no education, what would be your utility? Would you make more utility? Let's see. Well, if you instead had no education, uh, the firms would think oh, you're, you're penny-like, um, I mean, low productivity worker. So they would offer you only $10 per hour. And because you didn't have any education, the cost is going to be zero. So your utility would have been 10 in this case. So you know what? No education, if you switch to no education, you're not going to get better off. You're going to get worse off. So you know what? That means high type prefers education over no education, uh, no education. I tempted to write NE, but then you would uh, confuse it with Nash equilibrium. All right. So the high type is not going to regret his choice. Well, what about the low type? Usually the low type is the guy who uh, uh, wants to deviate. So let's look at the, I mean, yes, in signaling games, let me give you a hint. It's usually the low types that causes the problem. So if, if there is any uh, equilibrium, you better make sure that the low type does not, you know, uh, sneak around and pretend as if he is a high type. All right. So check carefully the low types uh, utility. So the low type doesn't get education initially, right? So what would be his utility? Well, remember, uh, the firms are going to interpret this as if like you're the low productivity type. And because you got no education, your utility will be 10. Well, however, if you get an education, what's going to be your utility? Hmm. If you get an education, so you basically pretend as if uh, you mimic the Sheldon like guys. So you're going to you, you're going to suffer a lot, six dollars. But it, at the end, you're going to get a diploma. All right. So because you have a diploma, firms are going to think that you're a high productivity guys. So they're going to pay you $15 rather than 10. But because the education was too costly, uh, $6, your net utility will be nine, which is less than what you could achieve if you actually don't get any education. So what does that mean? That means L type 
prefers no education over education. In conclusion, in this problem, there is a separating equilibrium in which the high type, a high productivity worker gets education and the low type worker doesn't get education. Okay, as simple as this. I hope that was clear.